Hey everybody, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com, joined by Nate Atkins. It's finally here after after months of, of, of rumors and innuendo and smoke screens and God knows what. Uh, it's finally draft day. Uh, happy draft day, everybody. I know that uh, my cat's going to be happy to, to get me back here in a couple of days. Uh, but it wouldn't be a draft without you know one more mock uh, and, on the pile of a million mocks that are out there. Um, we put our, ours out today. I saw that you gave the Lions, um, Jared Davis, the linebacker from Florida. Explain the pick, Nate. Why'd you give the Lions to Jared Davis? Yeah, it's a trendy pick these days. A lot of people doing this. I just think it makes a lot of sense for what they need and what they're trying to get out of a pick in the first round. They need a playmaker, a guy that really jumps out athletically. And he literally jumped out. He was the <laughs> best broad jump in, in, I see uh, what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> in vertical jump at his pro day. Would have been the best of the combine. What amazes me about Gerard Davis is he did that after the ankle injury that kept him out of the combine, right. and he still came back and trained that well. It says a lot to his football character. I think they need a guy they can trust to be the communicator on all three downs for the defense, also cover running backs and tight ends. I just think he's the safest pick there between a, a guy like him or, or Reuben Foster from Alabama. Another similar player, but a lot more concerned, so I'd go with Davis. What was Foster on your board? Uh, I think I had him just off. I I took Davis probably just over you know T.J. Watt and, and okay. Takaris McKinley. Yeah, okay. Uh, Taco Charlton was he still on your board? He was, but I have him falling pretty far. <laughs> see, I, no, I see, I see, I, I see it the other way, and I think and I've got Jared Davis on my board. I've got um, I've got Taco Charlton on my board among you know John Ross and some offensive options, and mm -hmm. I gave them Taco Charlton. I, I think he's exactly what this team is looking for. And I think Davis is a, is a great pick. It could be. Uh, the pick. I, I mean, I'm just another idiot with an opinion. Mm -hmm. So who knows what they'll do? Um, obviously, Jared Davis fills that need of linebacker. He's got the attributes that you described. He'd be a day one starter. It, it's, it makes sense on every level. But I look at, at Charlton. He plays defensive end, which is such a premium position in the NFL. And mm -hmm. linebacker is too, no doubt. But you need elite pass rushers in this game to get after quarterbacks to have to have a great defense. And that's something the Lions have to a degree in Ezekiel Ansah, but there's not much depth behind him. Mm -hmm. We saw that last year with what happened when he was injured and when he was limited by his injury. Uh, and who knows what happens with his contract going forward. You, you, you need to, to, to build around him. Right. Uh, there, there's just not enough depth. And I think, I think he's the guy, he's the best guy available on my board um, at that position. And you look at the length, I mean, I think he's six foot six. He's got the, the rangy body that the Lions mm -hmm. love, that Terrell Austin loves, that Chris Kasurik loves. And those guys, the biggest concern I, that I have about him is is just it, it, there's not a, a long track record. He's done it for basically mm -hmm. one year, um, and but I look at what Kasurik's been able to do with other guys who had maybe lots of talent, but maybe not the consistent um, production coming in. Even look at a guy like Ansa coming in. I mean, they mm -hmm. they've done wonders with him, and I, I just think it'd be a great marriage between the staff they have uh, and their ability to develop defensive ends, and a guy who has I mean some of the best physical attributes at that position. This side of Miles Garrett. Um, 10 sacks last season in 11 games. It, it, it's what you're looking for in that position. It's a hard position mm -hmm. to acquire in free agency or the draft. You, I, I just don't think, though, if he's there, I don't think uh, they'll pass him over. Yeah, they've left that end spot open ever since Devin Taylor went to free agency. So it's one I think they're going to fill early. He, you're right, he fits every bit of the size in, in that aspect that they want out of that position. I'm a little iffy on the fact that you're going to take him from an elite defense at Michigan that he played in for one year and ask him to be the guy here in Detroit. But uh, there's Ezekiel obviously... Ezekiel Lanza is offended by your, <laughs> by your thinking there. <laughs> no, no, no. Not... He's one of a couple I mean... playmakers that they could have. I mean, they didn't have him last year, and that's what Taco would need to be. He doesn't have guys protecting him the way he did at Michigan. So I'd be intrigued by that pick, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to see if, if yeah. he is the best guy on the no, board. That, that, that's a fair take. Um, you know, there's the Lions aren't going to draft by need in the first round. It's going mm -hmm. to be factored in, but it's going to be best player available more or less. So, you know, I, like I had John Ross on my board, that's a possibility. If Corey Davis is somehow there, he could be the pick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I saw Mike Corey Davis. I have a ton of respect for Mike Mack. I think he's my favorite, you know, national draft analyst or whatever in this process. And he had Corey Davis going to the Lions. I mean, he's a stud receiver. Mm -hmm. He can do everything. He's got the deep threat. He'd add a lot to the offense. And that is a dilemma the Lions have to face. They've spent so much on the offense, their best player is Matthew Stafford. Sometimes you have to protect those investments and, and make them pay off by surrounding them with more talent. We've seen that before. Mm -hmm. They've tried to do it before. Adding a guy like that to a receiver core that already has Golden Tate uh, and Marvin Jones would be intriguing. Eric Ebron, obviously. But uh, I just I like the defensive end. I think they'll go defensive end if the right guy's mm -hmm. there. Tacos off the board, then maybe Jared Davis is the pick. But I think 
you know, I, one other mitigating factor I, I, I looked at is I think there'll be a lot of really good options at linebacker at 53. You know? Right. They got That's Zach true. Cunningham. Uh, Zach Cunningham could be there. Tyus Bowser from uh, Houston could be there. Mm -hmm. There's some options. Not as good as Jared Davis. So it's a decision you have to make. But I, you yeah. know, there, there are if they go in a different direction in the first round, there are linebacker options they could find on day two. Yeah, and I'm with you on receiver. I think that's a pick people are kind of overlooking for the Lions, but it would fit perfectly into their pay structure. They're paying a lot to Golden Tate and Marvin Jones. If they want to get a number one receiver, if they feel like they need one, they got to go in the first round to do it. And I love Corey Davis so much. He was off my board at the time that they picked, but that's the guy I would take if was he's he, out of the Lions. Was Davis your first receiver off the board? I think he was the second behind Mike, Mike Williams. Williams yeah, Williams close. is intriguing too, and I know Williams has met with the Lions on a couple of occasions. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's an interest there, but uh, I think he might be the best true deep threat in this draft. I mean, I love what Davis does, but they, I mean, Mike Williams, watching his tape, he catches the contested ball as well as anybody, yeah. that big body. and His catch he, radius is unbelievable. It, it really is. I mean, it's... <laughs> He's not Calvin Johnson. I'm not calling him Calvin Johnson, but he's akin to Calvin in that he's got this crazy catch radius, mm -hmm. uh, and that obviously helps a guy with like Matthew Stafford, whose accuracy is improving, but he's still not the most accurate guy in the world, particularly mm -hmm. on deep balls. And to, 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 I think to spark that down the field, they need a guy who has that kind of catch radius. And one thing that I'd note is I think when they go out and they get pass protectors like Rick Wagner and TJ Lang and pay them as much as they do, it's not just to keep Matthew Stafford clean. It's to open up plays down the field. They didn't have them last year. They're not sure. I wouldn't be sure if Marvin Jones is that type of receiver yet. We could see. But I would not be surprised if they go after a Williams or a Davis. Two guys could be really good down the field if they were to fall to 21. Would you be surprised, just wrapping this up here, would you be surprised if they went David Njoku, the tight end from Miami? <sighs> I would be surprised by that. That's uh, the very definition of a luxury pick, and they earn a lot of hate. Not that that's what they're looking out for, but too many other needs to try and address. I understand the rationale that's being thrown out, right? I mean, he's a great player. He could go top 20, so there'd be, mm -hmm. there'd be value there at 21. Uh, you do have the Eric Ebron dilemma to consider. You know, eight and a half million or so is going to be a lot for next year, so he'd be basically your, your Ebron insurance, and if Ebron goes, I mean, you've got a, mm -hmm. a continuation at a really important position in this offense. I get all that stuff, but I'm with you. I think they have too many needs, too many other needs, and they have players who are going to be available to them at 21 who fill the needs. It's not like you have to go off board to fill those needs. I, yeah. I think it's a great marriage of you need defensive ends, you need linebackers, and there's going to be some of them that are there. Uh, and you know, a top receiver, if he drops, could be the fit, the, 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 the fit too, but I just don't see uh, the tight yeah. end thing happening. They've got spots to play great playmakers. Just don't overthink this. Let one fall to you and take him. That's what we got for for now. It's going to be a long day and especially a long night. We're going to be all over it from Allen Park. Uh, we'll talk to Bob Quinn after the pick is made, so make sure you keep it here at MLive. Uh, for all your draft needs, for Nate, I am Kyle.